Holding a wedding has its risks, like getting a crazy cousin to be the DJ or relying on the venue to handle the catering and then being presented with an old school buffet. Fortunately, there are alternatives and Vani has come up with some delicious traditional platters for a big Indian wedding. It's spring in the valley and brides to be have been beating a path to Chef Vani's door. Wedding season is upon us, which is celebrated over a number of days, bringing family, friends and loved ones from far and wide. Today I'll be creating some of Marigold's favourite wedding dishes. Our first dish is chamois kebab. We need some lamb mince, which all I'm going to do is just break it gently into the pot. Some fresh ginger. Some tur dal. Whole cinnamon sticks. Whole green cardamom. Whole black pepper. Some cloves. Some chana dal. Black cardamom. A good spoonful of deggy mitch, some salt, and some water. So this mixture will take about 45 minutes to cook. Once cooked, pick out all the whole spices and blend to a paste. But I have pre-made some chamois kebab mix. To form the chamois kebab, I just need a little bit of warm water, which I'll dip my hands in, and I'll form this into little balls. Gently press down. The chamois kebab is going to be so delicious because it just melts in your mouth once you eat it. I'm going to swap my pot for my frying pan. Add a little bit of ghee. The ghee is ready, so I'm going to put the chamois kebab in, but always remember to put it away from you as it doesn't splatter onto you. And all I'm doing is I'm flicking it away from me. And this is ready, so let me plate this dish. So I'm going to finish this dish off with a coriander and mint chutney. Do be gentle when you're taking the chamois kebab out because it is very soft. And a few sprigs of coriander and a few petals of mint. And there we have our chamois kebab. The next dish I'll be making is a mixed vegetable potli samosa. But it's not a traditional samosa. It's made into a little parcel that looks like a little pot. So the first thing is our ghee into a hot pan. The next is the ginger garlic puree. And I'm just going to squish that around just a few seconds just to fry off. The aroma of the ginger garlic puree is already coming together. So I'm gonna do onions. And I'm just gonna saute that out for about 30 seconds just to soften gently. This is looking good, so I'm gonna add in the tomatoes next. A little bit of fresh chopped chilies, carrots, peas, cauliflower, some green beans, green peppers, and some potatoes. I'm going to give that a quick stir and I'm going to add in my spices, a little bit of turmeric, some Kashmiri chilli powder and some salt. And that's going to cook for about three to five minutes. This mixture is ready just to finish off some fresh chopped coriander and a good pinch of garam masala. So I'm going to switch this off. And while this is cooling down, I'm gonna make the potli samosa dough. For the dough, we need cake flour. You just wanna reserve a little bit just for our rolling. A good pinch of celery seeds, some salt, and some water. And with the water, you want to add it a little by little because you want a soft, pliable, workable dough. This dough is coming together beautifully. So I'm going to work this onto a floured surface. And just knead gently, just to get the gluten and all those beautiful celery seed and salt flavors together. I'm gonna to roll that into an oblong shape. And now to make the little discs. So cut into little balls 
and we're just going to let that rest while we make the rest of the balls. And just squish down onto your palms as you make it. So let me make the discs. So all I'm going to do is just gently flatten these with my floured fingers and I'm going to set them aside until we've got a few to make the samosas. And that's the last one. So now we can start with the filling. To make the potly samosa, just gently press the dough in your palm and a little teaspoon of filling. And I'm going to bring this all together into a little parcel and I'm going to put that onto the fryer basket. So I'm going to finish up the rest. Just squish gently to bring it all together and I'm going to gently fry this in a hot oil. These will take about three to four minutes to cook because you want them golden brown and crisp. This is ready, so let's take them out and place it on a paper towel just to absorb that excess oil. Let's plate up. These look so good. We're gonna finish that up with fresh coriander. To make the soji alva, I'm gonna make a syrup first. To start off, I'm gonna heat up a saucepan and to that I'm gonna add some milk, some water, palm sugar and some saffron. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil and let all those flavors infuse and then I'll remove it off the stove and fry the semolina. The palm sugar is just about melted and the saffron is infused beautifully with the milk and water, bringing out that rich, vibrant color. So this is ready, so I'm gonna set this aside and start sauteing off my semolina. I'm gonna place on my big saucepan, switch that on and add in the ghee. And I want this to melt just a little. We use a lot of ghee in this dish is because we know semolina halva is rich and good. I'm gonna add in the semolina. I'm just going to fry that off very gently. And remember to keep it at a medium to low temperature because you do want to fry this off ever so slowly. And all we're doing is we just keep stirring it because you want it to be a rich golden brown color. The soji is ready for the syrup to be added in. So and I'm going to do that ever so gently. I'm gonna add in my almonds, and raisins, and once again, the syrup. And remember to keep stirring or else you'll have a lumpy soji. And that's just bringing it all in together beautifully. And our soji alva is ready, so let's plate this up. Oh, I have to. Mmm, 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 too delicious. Delightfully different, yet authentically Indian.